Gordy. All right, guys. So what, what we're going to talk about this this unit is fungi. And the first thing that we keep going through is the theme is how they think they came to be. What scientists think is they came from a unicellular flagellated protist. So one cell things and little flagella. What they think fungi came from. Fungi look a lot like plants. Um, they're built like a plant, but they don't have what? Chlorophyll. Therefore, they cannot do photosynthesis. So they, so they look like a plant. Other than the fact they're not green typically, although there may be a few green fungi, but it's not from chlorophyll. Uh, they're heterotrophs. They have to eat. Now they don't eat the same way you do. They carry out what's called extracellular digestion. And we've talked about that before. That word means what? Outside, Outside the cell. Now you do extracellular digestion too. Except your digestion happens where? In an organ. Mostly in which organ? Small intestine. Mostly in the small intestine, not the stomach. Um, they, on the other hand, have what are called exoenzymes. And basically what that means is that they, they spit out enzymes onto the food. The enzymes digest the food outside the fungus's body, and then basically they just pull in the, the juice, suck in the juice. That's why when a fungus is growing on something, what does it start to feel like? Mushies, okay? Because they're digesting it outside their body. Extracellular digestion. They also have cell walls made of a material called chitin. What kind of chemical is chitin? Sugar. What kind of sugar? Say again. It's a polysaccharide. It's a big sugar, sort of like starch or cellulose, but easy to digest. A lot of you probably eat this fairly regularly in mushrooms. Mushrooms are a fungus. I don't like it personally, but, uh, but there are fungus that people eat. There's other kinds of fungi that people eat, like truffles. They're really expensive, like a $200 a pound kind of fungus kind of thing. Very, very expensive. Um, but that, that material, it's very much like starch tightness. All right, just a couple more general cellular characteristics about fungi. Most fungi are multicellular, many cells. Most protists are single cell. Most fungi are multicellular. There's some exceptions, like yeast. Yeast are a single cell fungus. But most are multicellular. All fungi are eukaryotic. They all have that true nucleus. Enclosed true nutrients, just like you. They're all heterotrophic, meaning they have to eat. And, and because they typically eat dead things, they're decomposers, what's that other word we've been using to describe it? Saprophytes. Or we might say sapros. Realize if you see that word, saprophyte or sapro, they're decomposers. They break things down. So we already talked about the fact that they have chitin in their cell walls. For most of their life, they're haploid. Let's think about that for a minute. Haploid means you have what? One set of chromosomes. Are you ever haploid as a human? Let's, let's, let's put it this way. What are the only haploid cells in your body? sex cells, sperm or eggs. The whole body of a fungus is haploid for most of its life. It's sort of the opposite of the way we are. We're always diploid except during what? During cell division, during uh, reproduction. They're always haploid except during reproduction. So they're the opposite of us in terms of their chromosomes. Let's think about that for a second. What's the advantage of being diploid? Why is having two sets of chromosomes in every cell a good thing? Genetic variation. So it does have to do with genetic variation. What did you say? Yeah, but not, that's not the most important thing. If, let's say Savannah, um, let's say Savannah inherited a mutated gene from one of her parents. A really bad mutated gene. But it's recessive. Her other parent didn't have that trait. Does Savannah have any problems? Nope. 
because dominant covers up recessive, correct? If you only had one chromosome of each kind, if you inherited a recessive trait, guess what? You got it because you have no what? You got no protection. You got no other set of chromosomes. Right? So diploid, being diploid protects you from mutations. Um, most mutations, a lot of them at least, are recessive. So if you've got two chromosomes, odds are most of the time those recessives aren't going to show up because they tend to be rare. Fungi, for most of their life, don't have that capability. But one thing that being haploid does is it lets them reproduce very easily, very quickly. And if you can reproduce fast, uh, let's, say, let's say a fungus landed on a piece of food and something else landed on the piece of food. Same time, same piece of food. Who's going to get most of the food? A fungus, because it can reproduce really, really, really fast and it can spread and cover up that food and that's decreasing competition. That's what we mean. It can beat out the competition because it can grow and reproduce so fast. Being happily doing asexual reproduction for most of the time helps them do that. They do have sexual reproduction sometimes. During sexual reproduction, they become diploid, and we'll see how that works in a minute. But the sexual reproduction, like always, that's for variation, genetic variation. And as we already said, they grow really, really, really fast, and that helps them squash out their competition. And you, you guys all know they grow best in warm, moist environments. In your house, where's the place you might be likely to find some fungus growing? Not on food. Where in your house might you find fungus growing? Not on food. Bathroom. Yeah, in the, like the bottom of the shower curtain. Just look. There's like little black or white spots on there. Might be mildew. Because the fungus likes where it's nice and warm and moist. That's what they need to grow. All right, some other terms here. Saprobes or saprophytes. We said that means they feed on what? Dead things. They're decomposers. Now realize most fungi are saprophytes. There are some exceptions. Some of you have probably had fungal infections growing on you. I don't think any of you are dead. Um, athlete's foot is a fungus infection. Um, a yeast infection is a fungus infection. Um, ringworm is not a worm. Ringworm is a fungal infection. Um, those are not saprophytes. Those are feeding on dead things. Those are parasites. But most fungus, fungi are saprophytes. Now, a big word today that you need to make sure you know is hyphae. Fungi are made out of these thread-like strands. That's what a hyphae is. It's a thread-like strand that makes up a fungus. Thread-like strand that makes up a fungus. And then a bunch of these thread-like strands, these hyphae, these, that might be a hyphae. Let me draw it up here. These hyphae, they start to twist around each other. And the more they knot, the more dense this fungus becomes. And when a bunch of them are all intertwined like that, it's called a mycelium. Mycelium. Sometimes we refer to the mycelium as the fungus's body. It's made of these intertwined thread-like hyphae. If you ever look at a, micro, uh, a fungus under a microscope, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a bunch of threads. Each of those threads, a hyphae. All the threads together is a mycelium. Now, when you see these letters, M-Y-C, anytime in biology, M-Y-C, should clue you in. You're talking about a fungus. M-Y and C. I had to take classes in college called mycology. It's the study of fungus. So the whole class was about. Had to take two of them. Um, now a couple of other things we want to talk about with the hyphae. Some of the hyphae and some fungi are septated. What's a septum? You have a septum in your nose. What is it? You have a septum in your heart. What's a septum? A connecting 
not so much a connecting, but a dividing wall. It's a wall that divides things. So some fungi have, their cells are separated from each other by a septum. So these, these hyphae that we're talking about are actually made of cells. And there might be a, a wall there and a wall there and a wall there and a wall there. And my picture's not very accurate because I'm not saying there's a wall that goes across nothing. This would be like an enclosed cell. More like that. That's what we're saying. If this was a hyphae or hypha, these walls would be the septums. And they would separate each cell from the one beside it. Now, fungi are unique in that there are some that are senescitic. And what this means is there are no walls between the cells. There's no septum. When the cells divide, it divides the nucleus, but not the cytoplasm. So the cells become multinucleated. There's no, there's no wall between them. It's just like one cell with a lot of nuclei. It just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. That's pretty unusual, but there are some fungi like that. Something we'll see in the next one of these um, morning sessions is we'll see some pictures of this thing called Hostoria. There are some fungi who have hyphae made to catch things, made to catch prey. Sometimes they look like little lassos. And if uh, a prey, whatever they happen to be trying to catch, gets into that lasso, it tightens, and then they catch it. They spit out their enzymes on it, their exoenzymes. They digest it outside their body, and then they suck in the juice. Kind of gross. Kind of gross. Um, but Hostoria are hyphae made to capture prey. Another word that we'll see a lot in this unit, fruiting body. A fruiting body is the reproductive organ of a fungus. It's the part of the fungus that makes what? Spores. Spores are the reproductive cells of a fungus, right? They're almost like a what in a plant. Very similar to a seed. Think of a spore like a fungal, a fungal seed. That's basically what it is. One other thing we'll see is this word right here, canidia. Canidia, that word typically refers to spores made through asexual processes. Asexually made spores. They're usually really tiny and they look sort of like dust. Tiny, tiny spores usually made through asexual means. Which means what about the speed they can be made with? Very fast. Can be made very, very, very fast. All right. In terms of the way fungi reproduce, there's three steps in their sexual reproduction. We're talking about sexual reproduction right now. And actually, I think before I talk about this slide, I want to look at a picture. 